Hey guys, let me see if I can get my camera up a little higher. Yeah. It's about 9.30 at night. I had done a video earlier, about 9 o'clock, and I went to edit it, and um, I don't know, I just scrapped it. I was just like, it just wasn't, it wasn't good. It wasn't something I wanted to do. And I thought, you know what, I'll just do a vlog instead. And um, I don't know why I film at night. <laughs> I'm just restless. The house is usually quiet. Um, it's not real quiet right now. i got someone eating over there, but my dishwasher's going, so I had to turn my dishwasher off. But I had done a vlog. Um, before I got my hair done, before I got it cut. And it was one of those things where you answer like five questions and I can't find it. I don't know where it's at on my list. I don't know if I deleted it accidentally or what, but I'm gonna go over some of the stuff that I did in that video. And if you say to me, Laura, it's already, <laughs> you already did this. Mm -hmm. The reason why you can never really tell what's in your videos is you're not allowed to go back and watch them. Um, if you do, you have to pull them off um, and put them on private and watch them. If you watch them and keep them posted, um, YouTube will, you know, demonetize you. And um, I had uh, my last video, I'm trying to think of what it was. Um, that role play one. Everybody liked it, yada yada. They had pulled it and demonetized it, saying that it was uh, inappropriate for viewers. Really, come on. Inappropriate, please. Anyways, I got a, um, I, you can ask for it to be reviewed, which it's already been watched like over 800 times. They went ahead and remonetized it today, which pisses me off because 800 views, it could have been, you know, generating some money for me, but it wasn't. So, whatever. I'll get over it. <laughs> Anyways, one of the questions were, um, Let's talk about what was the last movie you went to see. I don't go to theaters. I don't. It's just, to me, it's a big movie screen. And you end up paying like 30 bucks. I mean, unless it's something I really want to see, then I'll, I'll go do it. But I wanted to see this, and it's called An Interview with God. And as you can see, it is unopened. <laughs> Why is it unopened? Because my son said, you can watch this for free on this um, thing on, it's not on YouTube, but you can watch it for free if you go to this one site. So I'm watching, I'm saying, this is cool, you can watch all this for free? And he said, well, they're pirated. And I said, oh, well, man, that's like stealing. I don't steal, especially some movie about God. Mm -mm. So I had my, my husband buy it for me finished watching it of course but I had them buy it so that I don't know I don't feel like <laughs> I need that guilt and condemnation anyways these two actors right here they're what makes the movie they're so 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 good and it's biblically accurate if you want to say um, it's a reporter and he sets up an interview, he didn't know it was with God. And he goes there and, and um, it's so cute. I'll just tell you a few parts, but he's like, can you, you know, speak into this recorder and spell your name, you know, say your name, spell it. And he goes, my name is God, G-O-D. You know, I thought it was so cute. And, but it's kind of a lot like the Bible. If you're asking yourself, why is there suffering and death and all that it's 
from the original sin. I mean, if Adam and Eve hadn't sinned, by the time they got to me, I'd have broke it. I'd have sinned. <laughs> It might not have been eating no apple, but it would have happened. It would have happened no matter who it was. It's just us. It's who we are. You know? Anyways, I loved it. That was cute. Um, really took off well in the beginning. It's fast-paced in the beginning, and it gets a little slow. And um, I'm, I'm some, I have to watch with, you know, a remote in my hand so I can fast-forward everything. I don't care what it is. I'm going to fast-forward through it. Um, anyways, if you get a chance to watch it, I don't think you've heard of anybody, any of these. David Straththarn and, um, Brenton Thwaites, Thwaites, T-H-W, Thwaites. And it says, what would you ask? Oh, I got me some questions, I'll tell you that. I know what I'd be asking. Okay, what else do you do? It says, what do you read? Now, besides my Bible, um, I do a lot of Bible plans. Um, I'm doing one by uh, Charles Stanley, and it's like a 30-day Bible plan. It's not just, I don't want to read the whole Bible in 30 days, okay? I want a specific subject. Um, and I want to study on that subject. If it's angels, I want to study on angels. If it's, um, I have a son that had cancer, so if I wanted to do the, a study on healing, I just want it to be verses about healing. That's how I study. I study by um, a category or a theme. So that's what this is. And then um, my next one is, probably one you wouldn't expect from me, but it's called Fifty Shades of Politics. And it's by Dick Morris. Let me try to get that in there. Dick Morris. He is one of those, almost a walk away. Um, uh, I don't know if you've ever seen those hashtag walk away, where uh, a lot of people are walking away from the Democratic, uh, the Democrat Party over to the Republicans. But he was a top advisor to uh, Bill Clinton. And so he's got a lot of stories in here. And he talks about one where he was arguing with Bill Clinton about something in the White House. And Bill Clinton had been drinking and he tackles Dick, knocks him to the floor. And he says, just as, Dick, uh, just as Bill was ready to punch him in the face, Hillary came out and stopped Bill. Um, but that was funny. He's better in person. You can see him on YouTube. Um, his stories are good. They're to the point. Um, they're short. Little short snippet stories. There could be two stories to a page. I mean, um, at the most they're two pages long, you know, to tell a little story. Whatever. But I liked it. I like reading like this because it's quick and fast. If I'm gonna read a book and it's like, you know, 200 pages before I even, I'll start at the beginning and then I'll just get to the end. Because I ain't got time for all that. Um, when I was young, I would sit there and read for like five, six hours. And as I've gotten older, no, I don't feel like sitting around for five or six hours and reading a book. I really don't. So I get a certain type of book that's got um, little snippets, I call them. I don't know what you call them. Little stories. My dog's having a little fussy fit over there. All right, my next book. When he was young, this man was so cute, so hot. Um, you go back and look at some of his earlier movies, his face was flawless. His hair was blonde. What a cutie pie. And he was 20 years older than me. Still is. He's about 20 years older. Maybe more. Yeah, you know, now that I'm thinking about it, he's about my mom's age. William Shatner. William. It's 
called Live Long and, and it says what I learned along the way. Not so cute anymore. Not handsome. Still cute face. Little cutie. Little cutie pie. Anyways, same thing in this book. Little stidbit, little stories, little um, kind of uh, he's going to talk about his wife's death. Keeps it short. He's not going to go into a big thing. Talks about Leonard Nimoy. Keeps it short. Um, some, of his, some of his feuds. Um, hard to tell. He fought you know, he had a lot of fights with everyone, mainly because he was a scene stealer and, and uh, you know, stole lines and stuff. But that's how Hollywood is. You've got to stand out. And <laughs> my son's a cameraman. I don't know if I ever told you that. And um, he's worked on a couple major films. And um, he said some, he'll tell you about, my son tells me about two people. Um, he was working on a George Clooney film, Men Who Stare at Goats. And um, the producer, directors, whatever, will come up and said, the first day of the shoot, he said, do not talk to George. Do not look at George. Don't ask him any questions. Don't ask for autographs. You know, don't even look at him. You know, he doesn't want to be bothered. Forget it. And you can get fired if you break those rules. But then um, my son worked with Brian Austin Green, and he started in that Beverly Hills 90210. And um, he came out and had lunch with everybody, and sat down and had lunch, and was talking uh, to my son and telling him about his new girlfriend he was dating at the time. But he shot, my son was a cameraman on that uh, film, uh, don't blink and my son said you could tell just filming it that it it wasn't going to be a hit because there was no monster something was happening to everybody everybody was disappearing but there was no end there was no who done it there was no monster that came out it was just one one lone survivor that's it never showed but he said he knew it when he was filming it and um but, you know, to get back to William Shatner, that's how they are. Some, some are, everybody has a different personality, and that's just how it is. He worked with some other guy I was going to tell you about. He worked with, um, he played a dad in that 70s show, but he wasn't the main dad. He was um, the girlfriend's dad, the one with the frizzy hair, the afro. And he worked with him on a commercial, I think it was. And my son said the first thing he did was he bought everybody pizza. He bought pizza for the whole crew. And, you know, the whole, you know, you're buying pizza for like 120 people. It gets expensive. But he bought pizza for everybody. He said he was a real sweetheart. Talked to everybody, everything. And here comes my kitty. Okay, I threw the cat down. I didn't throw it down. <laughs> Body slam the kitty. If I made her get down. Anyways, William Shatner. Bunch of little stories. And he kind of makes it sound like he did not know that he was doing what he was doing. That he was making people, you know, pissed off at him. He didn't know. At least that's how he makes it sound in the book. Um, he goes over lots of different um, subjects. All of his wives. Um, doesn't really talk about his kids much, things like that. Um, some of the other questions they ask you just seems like, I don't know, like high school stuff, like what's your favorite color? Don't have. What's your favorite food? Um, <laughs> these days anything. Um, I'm back on my keto diet and I was just real unhappy how the diet was going. I've done this keto. It's it's really it's I shouldn't even call it a diet. That's how I eat, period. I haven't had bread in forever. Um, I don't eat potatoes, none of that. It's just really meat and vegetables is what it is. 
Um, and you can have eggs and dairy. Well, it's good if you're just maintaining, but if you're trying to lose weight, you, the keto goes into a fasting phase of it. And I'm in the fasting phase. So right now, I would eat just about anything. Any kind of food's my favorite food right now. Um, but it says like, what, you know, what do you go for? The same, everybody picks the same thing, you know, it's, you know, Tex-Mex and, and uh, seafood and steaks. Pick from that. You got me. I'm your girl. Yum, yum, yum. Um, I can't find the video on this. If I've talked about these in another video, leave me a comment. I will delete this video off. I'll pull it off and delete it. But from what I'm looking at online, I can't see it. And I'm reading the same questions as, it's a questionnaire, it's from YouTube. And um, anyways, but that's it. And I, it's late at night and so I got my little jacket on. I keep my phone in this. Um, we're having a cold spell here. It was like 70 just a few days ago and I went out for a bike ride and um, I did 10 miles and loved it and now it's like hitting all the way down into the 30s and so um, it's probably why I'm filming at night because there's nothing to do I mean if it's snowing I, I'll snow ski I'll do whatever you know um, hike but when it's just cold there's no snow there's not much to do you can't snowmobile you can't do none of that um, just cold. <laughs> no ice fishing, no skiing, no skating, no snowmobiling. Mm -mm. Nope. So it's not my thing. I've got to have, and I, I like, I don't like hot weather. Um, I think that was one of the things that, because, you know, what do you do? Do you go shopping? What? I'm an outdoor person, but I hate the heat. Um, I mean, I don't even want to be outside if it's so hot. I'm just sweating. I don't want to. Um, but cold weather, shoot, it's cold. You just go put on a coat and you can go outside and bike ride. You can go outside and walk. You can go whatever. And we went to the river walk not long ago. I mean, we just bundled up, walked all along the river and thought, well, we'll be the only ones there. There won't be anybody else there. Huh? Everybody was there because, um, I mean, they probably thought like us, you know, they'll just go grab a Starbucks and enjoy. But I bought a new light uh, for filming. Now, I'm not, I can't use it with my glasses because there's a bifocal in here, which you can't see. And um, the minute the light hits it, all of a sudden that, that area right down here where the bifocal is lights up like there's two lights right here so I have to leave it off and I don't feel like going and putting my contact lenses in just for a nighttime shoot so um, but anyways those are my things those are my books that I'm into right now I've been reading on and off because these have little snippets in it and then put it down pick it up a week later and you haven't felt like you've missed anything same thing with William Shatner's love it except for William Shatner's I did read like in two days there was nothing boring in it um, Dick Morris he's a good speaker in person he has a good personality um, if you were watching him, he'd keep you interested, keep you glued into the screen. But to read it, something's missing. It's, it misses part of that um, charisma that holds you, that captivates you and, and keeps you interested in it. But anyways, that's it. I thought I'd uh, just give you a quick little video. Um, like I said, leave me a comment. If you see this on there, and you said, Laura, this was already on there. Girl, it's right here. 
I'll take it off and delete it so it's not on there twice. But I can't find it. And um, I know I did one of these videos, so, you know, let's see where it goes. Anyways, um, I've been yapping now for long enough, about 40 some minutes. Anyways, I hope you have a great night. I hope you sleep. If you're like me, I love to fall asleep listening to someone talk. And it's kind of what I do every night anyways. I play YouTube until it's the wee hours. And I'll wake up in the middle of the night and I'll hear someone talking. And uh, it's my YouTube video. But uh, I hope this helps you sleep. Probably bore you to sleep. Mm -hmm. Anyways, talk to you later. Hope you have a good night. Bye-bye.